Hi YouTube, so if you've carried on from the last video, we've now got a box file that we can actually use to boot up in Vagrant. The Vagrant file that we've got is very, very, very simple. All it really does is it takes the box file that we've created, tells Vagrant where it is, and assigns it a name, and then boots up a machine that we can then log into and use as our lab servers. So let's get that going and then after that we can we can talk about what Vagrant is. So the Vagrant requires us to have a file called a Vagrant file. So you can see in this directory, which is now Vagrant test, inside of there we've got a Vagrant file. So in order to get Vagrant to boot up a machine, we just go Vagrant up. Now there's only one machine in here, which means it will boot up all of the machines. In turn, it would only be one. But if you just wanted to boot up a single machine, you would just say Vagrant up and then the machine name. So in this case, it would be Builder. So you can see on line 10, we've got the name Builder. And that'll bring the machine up. So why would we use something like Vagrant? Vagrant gives us the ability to codify our labs. We can then take our Vagrant files, add more provisioning steps into them, such as shell scripts or chef runs or Ansible runs or Puppet or whatever conflict management system you want to use that Vagrant actually supports. And that'll mean that we get a machine that is consistent every single time we boot it up. We can then share that machine with another person or share the Vagrant file rather with another person and allow that person to also boot up the machine, provided they can get to the artifacts that the Vagrant file requires such as the box file or any installation packages that your scripts or provisioning services require. So you can see on the left hand side of the screen we've just taken our box image or our box file and we've told Vagrant to boot it up. The very first time it's going to take a little bit of time to get running but because we've told Vagrant to use this option over here called linked clones it'll create a machine on our virtual box system and every single time we use the same image in another machine it's going to take just a few seconds to boot that machine up so you can see our machine's gone from having nothing installed to being ready to actually log in so now if you go vagrant ssh you'll see we'll log into the actual machine so this is our machine that we've now built using our packer run so we said that we wanted docker on here we also said we wanted go And we also said we wanted Ruby. So you can see those three main tools are already there and we don't have to install those every single time. We just need to boot the machine up and those tools are ready for us to use. Now, if you're going to be working on Linux style systems, but you're running a Windows machine like myself, these are a godsend. You literally just need to boot up the machine, which takes just a couple of seconds to fire up. And then you've got a full Linux environment that you can mess around in. And the thing is that these things are disposable, so you can just trash them. So let's destroy it. So vagrant destroy minus F, so it doesn't ask me any questions. And then we can just bring the machine up again. So we don't really need to worry about installing something, messing up the machine, and then having to reinstall another machine, which is going to take us half an hour or something like that. We just bring the machine up again. So you see, this time the machine should come up much quicker. Because it's a linked clone, we don't need to bring that box file in again. So we're just waiting for the machine to actually turn on. And we're nearly there. And that's it. So now we've got a machine that we can log into again. So, Vagrant SSH. And again, Docker PS, just to show that Docker's on there. Go version Ruby minus V.
pop the bucket type. There you go. So you can see this is why we get our packer run going. So we can have lab servers that we can just spin up, destroy, spin up, destroy, spin up, destroy to our house contained, and we don't need to worry about constantly reinstalling stuff all the time. So that brings us to the end of the series. I'm going to do one more video that covers just the little nitty gritties about the JSON templating language that Packer uses just to give a little bit more detail about how to take this a bit further. But if you don't want to know any more of that and you just want to get your machine up and running, go take a look at the GitHub site, which will be in the description below and get your machine up. So the rest of the videos, in the future, if I'm ever booting up a machine using Vagrant, most likely it's going to be a machine that I've built with this style. It will most likely be this machine in the videos for the next, say, year or something until the next Ubuntu release is stable or unless I absolutely have to use a different OS. So I hope that's been informative for you. And if you like it, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and let me know what you think in the comments.